In every game of Magic, there's always one player who's trying to end the game and one player who's trying to keep the game from ending. In other words, a player who's on the offense and a player who's on the defense. Two of the hardest questions you'll have to answer as a Magic player are, what role am I playing in this game right now? And when do I know to switch roles? That's right, we're taking a look at role assessment in today's episode of Talarian Tutor. And dive Diving deep into whether you're trying to outrace your opponent or hold them off until you can get the wind back in your sails. We'll cover a couple of previous topics in the context of role assessment, examine what it means to be on offense versus defense, and go over some common mistakes. We're not noobs anymore, but we're not yet at the Pro Tour. This video is for people who already play at Friday Night Magic, but want to improve and get better. This is for intermediates, and this is Talarian Tutor. First of all, we cannot move forward without acknowledging Mike Flores' seminal article, Who's the Beatdown? Published almost 10 years ago on the dojo, you can find it now on Star City Games. It's definitely a must read if you want to improve at playing Magic, and I'll link it down below for you to review. Consider it your first take home assignment from me. Now, one of the things we've repeated time and again is, what does your deck want to do? Or what is your game plan? You need to know how your deck wants to win the game, and that'll help give you an idea of what role you'll be playing a good deal of the time. If you're an aggro deck, you'll want to put pressure on your opponent as early as possible on turn one or turn two, so you'll usually be on the offense. If you're a control or combo deck, you'll want to hold your opponent off as much as possible, dealing the final blow with big, valuable finishers or with your game-winning combination. Therefore, you'll want to be on the defense for most of the game. A more flexible deck archetype like mid-range or tempo will need to be more aware and responsive towards what's going on with the board's state. This is where understanding whether being on offense or defense is incredibly important. Of course, it's easy to pilot your deck when you're in a position to play it out without much resistance, but knowing when to switch to one role or the other and getting a feel for when the tide of the game is turning will make the difference between winning sometimes and winning consistently. Let's start by defining the main differences between the two roles in a game. Offense and defense. If you're on the offense, you're trying your best to end the game quickly and decisively in your favor. This usually means you're attacking with creatures or dealing direct damage to your opponent using spells, pressuring them to make bad trades and reducing the amount of time they have to draw an answer to your onslaught. As we mentioned before, aggro decks are a classic archetype that immediately starts on the offensive and stays on the offensive for as long as possible. Its small, cheaper creatures and spells mean that it has the advantage in the early game and will want to kill the opponent quickly, usually by turn five or six. With mid-range decks on the offensive, playing on curve is important, but prioritizing board presence and removing obstacles becomes key in making sure you can push forward towards the win. Remember, playing offense comes down to two main principles. If you can win the game, it's good to do so. Stay focused, stay conservative, and try not to do anything fancy. End the game as quickly as possible. Don't let your spells and creatures become outvalued by your opponents, especially as the game drags on, and try to remove anything that can stop you from finishing them. If you're on defense, you're trying to keep the game from ending as long as possible until you can play the most powerful cards in your deck. Control decks manage this by using large toughness creatures, counter spells, and bounce spells in order to stall out the game. Combo decks are similar, using sweepers and removal in order to finally reach their win condition. Playing defense also comes down to two main principles. Stall out the game until you can pivot into the offensive. Knowing what your deck's win condition is will be vital in understanding this turning point. 
Have a plan to win the game. Even if you're stalling out the game, have a strategy in mind to execute once you know it's time to pivot so that you don't whiff on finishing your opponent. With that, let's get to the real question of this session, how to pivot from one role to another. Turning the corner or pivoting is one of the hardest things to do successfully in Magic. Not only do you need to understand what role you're playing in the first place, but you also need to pick up on when to pivot and how to see the game through from that position. Let's go through some examples and cover some of the broader themes to watch for in order to play your role well. Let's take a look at a couple of examples where threat assessment and understanding your meta can help determine whether you play on offense or defense and then do it well. Example one, you're in a modern event and you're playing a Jund deck versus Infect. You're on the play, so on your turn you drop a Verdant Catacomb, which at the end of your opponent's turn, you plan to crack for an overgrown tomb. During their turn, your opponent drops a forest and plays a Glistener Elf and passes the turn to you. On your turn, turn two, you play a Black Cleave Cliffs and you've got the option of either casting Scavenging Ooze or Terminate. Which of these cards should you cast? Should you prioritize Board Presence or eliminate the Glistener Elf? The answer lies in understanding how your deck is going to win, but also how your opponent's deck works as well. Jund wants to win over time by getting increasingly powerful cards on the board like Tarmogoyf and using direct damage spells like Lightning Bolt. Infect's main strategy is to inflict infect damage using small creatures with evasion. Glistener Elf may be small, but there are ways of making it unblockable, like using slip through space and pumping it up using spells like Rancor or Might of Old Crosa. Based off this, we can see that Infect is on the offense here, trying to inflict poison damage with small attacking creatures. As the slower deck here, Jund is on the defensive until it can get its big threats online. While Scavenging Ooze places a blocker on the board, it needs time and man to get bigger and become more of a threat. In this case, choosing to terminate that Glistener Elf is the correct play. Though this example doesn't show you racing towards the finish, it demonstrates another important concept to keep in mind when you're on the defense keeping the board at parity. You're acting defensively here in order to get a bigger payoff down the road and pushing your opponent back in terms of their board presence. Example two. So this time you're playing against Jund. You've got three targets on the board you could possibly eliminate using your removal spell. Your opponent has a Scavenging Ooze, Tarmogoyf, and Dark Confidant. Which one do you kill? Let's take a look at each option and evaluate it. Scavenging Ooze is a great target if you're playing a graveyard in strategy like Dredge. A card like the Dreaded Scooze will be the biggest obstacle to your win condition in this situation. Depending on whether you have removal or something you can delve for, you could use this opportunity to flip from defense to offense, or just hold off for now. Tarmogoyf is the right target for your spell if you're trying to outrace your opponent and it's large enough to win that contest. For example, if you're both at 10 and Tarmogoyf is the largest creature on the board, it absolutely makes sense to to kill it over the other options. While Scavenging Ooze and Dark Confident are also powerful cards in their own right, they are less likely to kill you than a big goif. At this point, you've made the decision to play on offense. Dark Confidant is the best target for you if you want to draw out the game. Let's say you're playing a control or combo deck, so you're stalling out and definitely don't want your opponent to get that extra card advantage. Getting Bob out of the way here is the way to make sure your opponent plays more fairly than they otherwise would. In all of these options, the answer is always the same. Get rid of the card that will make it hardest for you to win the game. Knowing what your deck wants to do will help make that decision much easier for you. So always assess the board with this in mind and tie that into the role you're playing. Now let's talk about pivoting or switching roles. Sometimes you start offense but then need to pivot to defense. The general rule of thumb when switching roles is to assess whether or not you're far enough ahead or your opponent is far enough behind that you can start to race your opponent to the finish. If you feel like you can, 
plan, you should pivot from defense to offense. Now that we have an idea of how to assess the board and potential threats, we can start looking at other examples to figure out when to switch from offense to defense and vice versa, all while keeping our deck's winning strategy in mind. Example, let's assume you're playing blue-black control against a white weenie's human deck. And after managing to head off some initial aggro attacks, your life is down to 10 and your opponent is still at 20. On the board, your opponent controls Athalia, guardian of Thraben, and you control a torrential gear hulk. Question, if you start attacking with your torrential gear hulk, can you outrace your opponent if they constantly attack with Thalia as well? The answer is yes. Even though your opponent is at full life, your gear hulk can deal 5 damage per turn, whereas Thalia can only impart 2 damage. Therefore, you can absolutely get your opponent to zero before they're able to win. Given these facts, it's absolutely the right call here to switch into offense. Another thing to remember when evaluating whether to switch from one role to another is to identify what is prompting you to make that switch. You'll need to then ask yourself if you're able to deal with this, or just keep doing what you're doing already. Now that we've covered the major your tenants of role assessment, let's go through some common mistakes that players tend to make when trying to master this. You may recognize some of these tactics from earlier sessions, but they're worth repeating in the context of this more advanced concept. Mistake number one, countering the wrong thing. We've talked about this before when discussing how to play control, but when you're trying to play defensively against an aggro or mid-range deck that's on the offense, you need to be selective about what you counter. So what do we allow our opponent to do? Again, you want to deny your opponent anything that would deny you from turning the corner and pivoting into offense yourself. So this would mean countering anything that either gives them a significant advantage or gives you a significant disadvantage. For example, if you're playing standard or limited, don't counter their Death Gorge Scavenger. Save it for when Galta or Tezimok finally emerge. Mistake number two, thinking too linearly. Oftentimes it's easy to get caught up in either staying on offense or defense without realizing that there are times when you don't just want to keep attacking or turtling up. For example, if you're attacking with a bunch of creatures, say 611 goblins, and your opponent is at 18 and has one blocker, it might be worth taking a turn off to cast a sorcery speed piece of removal to get that blocker out of the way. By doing this, you're clearing the path to more damage when it's your turn to attack, especially if you cast Trumpet Blast after blockers are declared. Mistake number three, playing into a sweeper. If you're playing on offense against a control or combo deck, Deck, there is always a chance you'll end up getting wiped out by a sweeper spell like Settle the Wreckage or Anger of the Gods. As we've mentioned before in our aggro lessons, it's important to ask yourself a couple of questions before you rush into making your attacks. Remember how the sweeper works. If it's a settle the wreckage, then perhaps don't attack with all of your creatures at once. If it's an anger of the gods, then keep in mind which creatures might survive the damage and which ones won't. With that in mind, is the sweeper castable? If it is, then how much will it hurt you to play into it? If you definitely think the sweeper is coming, then play out your hand and your board just enough to make casting the spell barely good enough for your opponent. Stay conservative and keep some backup creatures in your hand just in case. That way, you won't be left completely helpless when the board gets wiped. Thanks again for watching another session of Talarian Tutor. Today we covered role assessment and its various nuances including identifying your game plan, playing offense, playing defense, turning the corner and pivoting, and common mistakes. This is Talarian Tutor. I'm the professor. Our professional consultant is my own tutor, Emma Handy. Michelle Rapp is our script supervisor. And remember, it's not about winning individual games of magic. It's about getting better. Win or lose. And so ends another episode of Talarian Tutor. And if you would like to see this show continue, then I need to hear from you. What lessons would you like myself, Emma Handy, and Michelle Rapp to cover in our future episodes? Let us know in those comments below. And remember, we have got lots of lessons at this point. Check out the Talarian Tutor playlist so that you know you haven't missed a single episode.